Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video marks the beginning of a series of lessons where we are going to cover the first topic of Form 3 Mathematics. In this channel, we will also be dedicated to cover the entire mathematics syllabus for Form 1, 2, 3 and 4. If you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that we let you know whenever we upload a new video. If you have an area of interest you want us to cover, feel free to let us know in the comments section. Without further ado, let's jump into the lesson. So the topic is quadratic expressions and equations. This is lesson one, factorization of quadratic expressions. So before we continue, I want us to note that factorization of quadratic expressions is from two work. And therefore, this lesson is just review of what we did in form 2. Let us explain what we mean by quadratic expressions. Quadratic expressions are expressions in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, and x here is a variable, to mean it can assume different values. And just the same way, if we're given a number, say 12, we can express it as a product of its factors, like 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And I think we can stop here because the next number is 4, which is a factor of 12, and 4 is already here. So these are the factors of 12, and therefore we have expressed 12 as product of its factors. We can express it in this way, in this way, or in that way. We can also do the same for a quadratic expression in this form. And that is exactly what we are going to look at in this lesson. In my first example, if you are given 3x squared plus 2x minus 8, and then you're told to factorize. We are going to factorize this. Then we need to understand the procedure for factorization. One, we need to identify two factors and the factors should be in such a way that their product will be equivalent to what we get when we multiply a coefficient of x squared and the constant term negative 8 that is 3 times negative 8 which is negative 24 so if you multiply the two factors you get negative 24 and if you add them you get the coefficient of x here that is 2 so the factors I just want us to see how we can get these two factors in a simple way. Now just consider this value negative 24, but now take the positive value that is 24. Try to express 24 as a product of its factors. So we can begin by 1 times 24, 2 times 12. We have 3 times 8. 4 times 6, 7 is not a factor of 24, 8, 8 is already here, so we stop. So these are the possible factors of 24. Now we are going to identify a pair that meets this condition here. For example, if you have 1 and 24, you realize there's no way we can combine 1 and 24 to get 2. There's also no way we can combine 2 and 12 to get 2. There's no way we can combine 3 and 8 to get 2. But when it comes to 4 and 6, that will be possible, especially when we make 4 negative. So if 4 is negative, add negative 4 to 6, that will give us 2. And again, if you have negative 4 times 6, that will still give us negative 24. So we are going to go by this pair here. But now we are going to make 4 negative, so that the factors are negative 4 and 6. Once we have identified that, 
The next thing is to come back to the expression that you are given. Our focus will be here. 2x. We are going to split 2x using these factors that we already have. So we have 3x squared and in place of 2x we are going to have negative 4 and 6. So we have negative 4x for negative 4 plus 6 x that is for this one 6 and then finally minus 8 then at this particular point we can factorize this by grouping so you pair this two and also pair that and identify common factors in them here the common factor is x and therefore you factor x out x into 3x minus 4 and here the common factor is 2 so we have plus 2 factored out and then into 3x minus 4. Usually this second bracket is just the first bracket so as you work it out you will always expect the second bracket to look like the first one and that's just a check if you're really doing the correct thing. Now, at this point, 3x minus 4 is a common factor. We can factor it out, and then we have 3x minus 4 into x plus 2. And finally, at this point, we have factorized the quadratic expression that we had here. Now, we have expressed it as a product of its factors. Remember, this first bracket is one of the factors and this one also is another factor. So we have multiplied the two factors. If you multiply this by opening the brackets, you get back to this. So that process is known as expansion. Expansion is the opposite of factorization. I want us to look at the second example. So example two, Consider a quadratic expression x squared minus 10x plus 25. If you are asked to factorize this again, following the same procedure, I believe this one will now be quick. The product is 1 by 25 and then the sum is negative 10. So for the factors, we will have 25 is 1 times 25 then the next factor is 5 times 5 and I think that is it. So here is only 5 and 5 that can give us what we are looking for by simply making both of them negative so that we have negative 5 and negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 gives us 25 so that is a product and negative 5 plus negative 5 gives us negative 10 and that is the sum. Now we are going to factorize this expression by having x squared and in place of negative 10x we'll have negative 5x and another negative 5x plus 25. Factorize by grouping x is common here x into x minus 5 and then here again minus 5 into x minus 5 as you can see this bracket has repeated here and therefore x minus 5 is common we factor it out so that bracket brought out inside the other bracket we have x and minus 5 so far we have factorized this and therefore we have expressed it as a product of its factors that is x minus 5 times x minus 5 remember this can be expressed as x minus 5 squared. Now one thing I want us to recall here is this. In our first example the result we had was 3x minus 4 into x plus 2 and in our second example the result we have is x minus 5 into x minus 5 which we can also express as x minus 5 
squared. There's something we can learn from these two answers. In the second answer, we realize that this is a square, and in the first one, it is not a square. In other words, the second result is a perfect square, and the first result shows us that the expression was not a perfect square. Just like if you have a number like 6, this can be expressed as 2 times 3. So this shows that 6 is not a perfect square. And given a number like 9, 9 is equal to 3 times 3, which can also be written as 3 squared. That means 9 is a perfect square. So that is a concept that I wish to bring to this lesson early enough because in the next lesson we'll dig much deeper into that but it's important to note that given quadratic expressions some can be perfect squares and others can fail to be perfect squares so that is it about factorization of quadratic expressions now i want you to try these two questions so this is an assignment for you Now factorize, the first expression is 6x squared minus 8x minus 8 and then the second one is 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now as you factorize, try to identify whether the expression is a perfect square or not a perfect square. Otherwise, we have come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.